Calculating free energy calculations under standard conditions is relatively simple, as it can be with any other standard change value. So if we look for change, which is the delta symbol, G stands for free energy, and this not symbol represents the standard condition, which is one atmosphere of pressure in 25 degrees Celsius. And most of these standard calculations pretty much use this basic equation that the summation, sigma meaning sum, of all of your products and the sum of all of your reactants can be found. And when you take the difference of the two, you find the change or delta G. So take the sum of all of your free energy of the products, sum of all of the free energy of your reactants, and when you take the difference of that, you get the change in free energy or the standard free energy of formation. Of course, the sigma represents summation and the sum of those values, and then we take the difference to find the delta value. But of course, when you do look up a G value in the appendices of a textbook or in a reference manual, or should you be given these values in a particular problem, it's important to note again that those values are representative of one mole of that compound, not any more. So should you look at your equation and then find that you have more than one mole, you need to multiply that G value by the coefficient to find the total G value, the total free energy value for all of those moles of that particular compound, whether it be a reactant or a product. That's why you've got a reminder here of M, which represents the number of moles of your products, and N here, which represents the number of moles of your reactants. When you do look up those values per mole, the units for delta G are in kilojoules, so that's a typical energy um, unit, so that should come as no surprise. Be mindful that free energy as well as enthalpy will use kilojoule values typically, but should you be using entropy or delta S, that will be in joules. So should you go back and forth between different uh, calculations, you want to make sure that all of your units for energy are in the same value, meaning all of them are kilojoules or all of them are joules. So let's take a look at this uh, example where we're calculating the, the standard free energy of formation for this reaction. And that is the following, where we're going to find delta G by taking the sum of all of our products and subtracting the sum of all of our reactants. So you're given the delta G values here for propane, oxygen, which when they combust, of course, form carbon dioxide and water. So we know that this is an exothermic reaction. It will definitely have a negative delta H because it releases heat. That's a property of combustion reactions. We also know that because gas moles are being converted into fewer gas moles and even into liquid compounds, the level of entropy or disorder significantly decreases when you have fewer gas moles and favorably liquid or solid compounds because they tend to have a lower entropy. So we know that delta H and delta S will certainly have negative values. So let's see what the delta G value will be considering one mole of propane, five moles of oxygen, three moles of carbon dioxide, and four moles of water. So these are the values that you would find that are standard values for each of these respective compounds. And of course, they are for one mole of that particular compound. So, okay, so let's go ahead and start plugging in values and solving for delta G naught. All right. Let's start off with our products. We have three moles of carbon dioxide, and they are each a value of negative 394.4. To that, we will add the value of four moles, so four times negative 237.2, the value here for water. We'll subtract out the sum of all of our reactants, which will be, of course, only one mole of the propane, so one times negative 23.5. And last of all will be the value for, of course, five moles of oxygen, which are zero. So five times zero, which we know is zero, but we'll put it there just for the sake of completion. All right, so let's simplify this a little bit. We've got the value of 3 times negative 394.4, which will be negative 
one one eight three point two and to that we will add then the value of four times negative two thirty seven point two which will be negative nine forty eight point eight and that will take care of our products. We will subtract then from that reactant amounts and the reactant amounts will be of 1 times negative 23.5 which is negative 23.5 plus 0. It's 5 times 0 is 0. Alright, simplification even further and we get the sum of all of our products this negative 1183.2 and negative 948.8 will be a very big negative number of 2132 and from that we will subtract the value of negative 23.5 which is the sum of all of our reactants so negative negative means this becomes a positive and so we will be adding 23.5 to negative 2132 which will give us a total value of negative 2108.5 and of course these are in kilojoule values.